being left untreated, this infection is just going to enter the bloodstream and Bernie is going to become one sick dog. This week on Bondi Vet. That lump. Have you seen that growing? Yeah. And quite quickly, hey? Really worried because there's these two big pockets of pus. He's actually seen pus coming from it and we don't know where it's coming from. You, you don't really want to see this. It's... There's a lot of pressure on us today because it's an emergency. Near Canberra, Audrey and Alison are answering an SOS to help rescue a young kangaroo found hanging upside down in a fence. Rosemary from nearby Possumwood Wildlife is first on the scene. When we are called out to a fence hanger, where you get this sort of tight knot in your stomach, you think, oh my God, is it going to be dead or have fractured legs? So some of them are just hanging in the fence with their leg almost severed. Once that animal knows that you're there, it will start thrashing. And you know the wires cutting into their leg more. They could dislocate the hip right in front of your eyes. It's very distressing knowing how much more damage they're doing and how painful it must be. And sometimes the outcomes are really bad. The girls are seconds away, and as they arrive, the badly injured kangaroo has been freed from the fence and is lying on the ground. This type is actually the hardest rescue. Caught by one leg, they can still kick with the other one. <laughs> and they are um, <coughs> very frightened. We arrive at the scene and we can see there's blood all over the fence, the fence hangers under some blankets. The little boy looks like he's in a lot of pain. Okay, if I just give him a good. bit of sedation. Just give him a bit of sedation. Yeah, so mum jumps the fence and the little one says, well, I'm going to try and jump the fence as well. <laughs> so what's probably happened is that the mother's jumped over the fence during the night and the little Joey has not been able to get that height and has actually got trapped. And it's probably the worst case scenario because it's springtime, there's a lot of Joeys, there's a lot of Joeys on foot and that generally is what happens because they can't see the fence at night. If the wire has cut completely all the tissue right through to the bone have to be euthanized and sometimes we get them and they've been hanging there for a day or two and so the foot or the toes completely dead yeah so it's 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 a shocking thing i, I really i find fence hangers very upsetting because they suffer so much yeah audrey and allison must move quickly to get the badly injured route to the possumwood hospital for urgent treatment and you think about it in a human perspective that's like a two-year-old little boy that traps in the fence overnight in the cold. He's in a lot of pain, Can't he's in shock. His mum. Upside down. himself <laughs> upside down, doing damage. It's just, it just should never happen. It's, it's so traumatic. The twins are desperately hoping they'll arrive in enough time to save the traumatised Roo. So we have to get this Joey urgently to Possumwood Hospital. Which way do you want? Out this way? Yeah, just take him out that way. So we stretch the Joey in straight into the surgery room and we need to stabilise him. We've got to get him warm, we've got to give him fluids, we've got to take some x-rays. So the best thing is we put him under general anaesthetic. So we pop some isofluorine gas and then tube him so that it's nice and safe and then we get started. And I'll give him IV access. It's not known how long the young Roo was trapped in the fence. So Audrey and Alison need to urgently assess his vital signs. Gosh, he's cold, his veins are so small. We get straight to it, we shave up the tail, look for the tail vein, we can't find one. 34.2, 34.3, cold. Come on, get warm, get warm, get warm. So this little guy is dangerously cold. He's been upside down, his blood has rushed to his head, he hasn't got much blood in his extremities. That's quite bad because we actually want to make sure that leg has a good blood supply, we know is injured. With the young Roo's life hanging in the balance, Rosemary pitches in to help, handing over heat packs. Yep, small one there. Eventually, the little Roo's temperature begins to stabilise and Audrey can finally locate a vein so they can start administering life-saving fluids. I'm just going to keep this foot warm and then we can start shaving up. So we're examining the injured leg and we can see that the injuries are quite severe. So it's a pretty nasty injury. You can see that the wire's kind of gone all the way around the ankle, which is not a great spot. We can see the exposed Achilles tendon, but luckily that Achilles tendon is intact. It hasn't been severed, which is absolutely amazing considered he's ring barked a part of that area. But seconds later... Oh, 
I think I see bone. Audrey discovers a new problem. So it literally went all the way down to bone, sort of rubbed against the bone and stopped. Um, it's just chipped away at it. It doesn't look like it's fractured. Can you see it's just chipped away at that corner? We'll get an x-ray on that. The biggest fear for us is that he's fractured something. If he's fractured a bone in his foot, especially around his ankle, that's going to be really hard to treat. So it could mean drastic consequences for him. So that really warrants at this point to do an x-ray, make sure that bone's intact. X-rays. So looking at the side view, I can see the areas through the skin where the wire is cut through, but the bone actually looks okay. Um, we'll take another view there, and then I've just taken a view from top to bottom, and that is also looking good. So I looked at all the ankle bones, um, everything's the intact. Joint looks, fine. joint looks fine, all the views look really good, so I'm pretty confident that it's down to the bone, but it hasn't fractured the bone. So great news that x-ray is all clear. Even though we can see the bone externally, it's actually intact. He hasn't broken any bones. He's been so lucky, so, so, so lucky. lucky. So next step is examining the hip. We need to make sure that he hasn't dislocated it. He's been hanging by one leg and twisting around. It's a very, very real thing that could happen. So we do a couple of tests, a couple of manipulation, and again, another tick, it's still intact. And so that means we can go to the next step, which is flushing, debriding, getting a bandage on and just putting him into recovery. Uh, we got a special source. We've been dealing with a lot of kangaroo wounds since the bushfires and what we were finding once we got them through that initial period of treating the burns and getting it to heal, they get these nasty infections and of course because they're out in the mud. Uh, so we cultured a lot of those wounds and we managed to find there were certain bacteria that kept popping up, found the antibiotics to treat that bacteria and then we invented this special gel source. So they're going to be open wounds, which means that they have to heal over time by themselves. We're not suturing it closed because there's actually no skin left to suture close. Pop some bandages on and he's actually going to heal really nicely with good nursing care. After his horrific ordeal, the little Roo is still not out of danger and will be closely monitored over the next few hours. And straight away, Audrey and Alison have another urgent case. So Rosemary asks us to look at another patient and this is actually an old fence hanger and we're really worried because there's these two big pockets of pus. She's actually seen pus coming from it and we don't know where it's coming from. Is it a piece of wire that's been left in there and now it's starting to get infected or is it a new injury? Oh, oh my God. Oh. Should I slightly tilt it? There's a possibility that this injury or this infection could have come from the fence hanging. Sometimes a little bit of barbed wire can track up the leg and form a seed of infection. Pus needs to come out. Pus is always better out than in. It's just full of infection and white blood cells. Oh. Heaps of pus keeps coming out. And I think it actually even surprised me how much pus came out. And the smell. And the smell. That is not a good smell. So smelly. <laughs> smells like egg. It smells like poo. You can't smell it? I have never smelled anything never. that bad. I don't even know how to describe that. It's actually stinging my eyes because it's that pungent. And that pressure that it was coming out was like a waterfall. It was just a waterfall of vile smelling pus. How painful must that be to have that much pressure on the leg, let alone the infection that's going on? I'm surprised she's been hopping around at all. I need a new dish, guys. And then we also really need to get a sample. So this sample is really important to send off to the lab because they're going to culture and we're going to see what sort of microorganisms are growing there and also what antibiotics or what treatment we can give Bulla to make sure this clears up. Oh my god, that's a smaller one. The bigger one's up there. You definitely know the medical people in the room because as soon as anyone sees or smells pus, the whole room fills up. Yep. Yes, we've got an audience we've today. Got an audience. You know what's gross? When I press this one, stuff comes out of <laughs> that one. As much of a sick fascination it is to watch all this pus coming through, it is at the back of my mind about how bad this has been for Woola. That pocket of pus has a tremendous pressure underneath it, so that's uncomfortable. Also on top of that, there's some severe infection going on. It might be bacterial, it might be viral, it might be fungal, but whatever it is, that is dangerous. It could go into her bloodstream, it could potentially infect her whole body, and she could die. So we get two 
full kidney dishes of pus, that is a huge volume even for us as vets to see. We give that large capsule a, a good flush out with some saline. As long as we identify what microorganism is causing this pus and infection and we give the right antibiotics for it, she should recover well. We've also given her some pain relief, so hopefully moving forward she can recover and be released into the wild. Hi buddy. At Possumwood, Audrey and Alison are checking on the young Roo at the centre of a dramatic roadside rescue. So we like to name all our patients in Possum Wood and because this little Joey has done so well, I think we need to find a fitting name for him. The Queen Denley, I think that suits you. I think Denley has a bright future. His injuries, although they are quite severe, they're going to heal really well. Oh, he has such a good patient. Thank you. Thanks. She's not actually from Bondi, she's from out, out of Burke. I am a doctor and I do at a health clinic out there every couple of weeks. GP Catherine Hutt has arrived at the Bondi clinic with a very unusual patient. I heard about this premature lamb that was going to get tapped on the head. I know, and apparently she was just very small and had been born in the stockyards and wasn't likely to live. So of course, <laughs> once I'd heard about her, my very tolerant team stopped off on our way home from the clinic and picked her up and here she is. I don't know how many flying sheep there are, but she actually did very well. But after two weeks in the city, Amelia is struggling. Poodle cross, is it? <laughs> really nice try. <laughs> Hello, you're cute, aren't you? Where do you pick up the, the lamb nappies? I've never actually seen the nappies with a hole in the back for the tail. <laughs> well, they're custom made, okay. can't they? We custom make them every morning. Um, the aisle three at your local supermarket? That's right. And the diarrhea she's had, you, you don't really want to no, see this. See it's, the technical name for that is, is scouring. Scours is essentially another word for severe diarrhea, but it's diarrhea with a nasty effect. It dehydrates them, it takes away their electrolytes. <laughs> and it means they're not absorbing energy and scours. It's probably the number one cause of mortality, of, of, of death in, in young lambs and in calves. All right, well, we need to fix it. Yeah, we do. <coughs> Ooh, she's ugly abscess here, just beside the bottom. You're better after, okay? Let's just help you. Now, just like a human baby, the smaller they are, the more fragile they are. She's been born premature and then missed out on her mum's milk. All those important antibodies have just bypassed her. She's never had them. So she's very alone in this world. I'm gonna give her a, a chalky liquid. Okay. Just to try and calm down her gut and, mm. and settle it so she's not producing all that diarrhea. Mm. Oh. No, not loving it. <laughs> Chris gives Amelia a vaccination and antibiotics, but he's worried it's only a temporary solution. <laughs> Samples will be sent to the lab to try and pinpoint what bacteria is causing Amelia's serious infections. As a doctor, Catherine's done a pretty good job getting Amelia to this point, getting through those tough first few days. But then when you see just how severe those scales are and how severe those abscesses are, you can see that she does need help. They both need help. Well, being a doctor, you do see some incredibly tough things, but um, and you'd think you'd be a bit immune to it and it wouldn't get to you, but her, she's just got to me. I'm just, I just love her and, um, and she's just the most special little thing, so I am a bit worried now. Amelia's test results are back and her infection's been caused by a bacteria called Pseudomonas. Now, they only get this infection when their immune system's given up the fight. And that's because she never got her mother's milk. She never got those antibodies that were gonna protect her for the rest of her life. The fact is, if we don't boost up her immune system, then a nastier bug, a deadly bug, is gonna come along and take her out. Sure, we can give her antibiotics now to fix this problem, but long term, we need a permanent solution. And I reckon I've got an idea. Chris is now on the road to the Golden Ridge Animal Farm to carry out his plan. We're gonna find an adult sheep and actually take some blood from her and take all those antibodies with it and transfer those antibodies from the blood into little Amelia. It works in foals, it works in calves, and I'll bet you it'll work in lambs as well. Now where are our sheep? Uh, they're up this way, so we'll go for a walk up here and we'll have a look. Elisa, who looks after the mixed bunch of residents here, 
is hoping to find Chris a suitable blood donor. So I, I guess we need sort of a, an older one. Yeah. Preferably a mother that, that might even have some antibodies of her own. Yeah, I've got a couple there with lambs at the moment, right. so we should be able to find one. Perfect. Do you all want to help, do you? Okay. She's got lambs at the moment. Yeah, great. This is very kind of you, you know that? She's very good. Yeah. This might just look like some sheep's blood, but it means so much more to Amelia. It's full of antibodies which are going to go into Amelia's system and essentially give her a future. And thank you. Oh, Mum. It's hard on you, isn't it? What's her name? Barbie. Barbie. Good old Barbie stepped up, did her bit, and she's the hero. She'll make all the difference. So now Barbie's blood's actually settled. You can see what I'm after. It's this clear golden fluid that's sitting on the top. That is full of proteins and full of antibodies. It's called plasma, and that's what needs to go from here into little Amelia. Catherine rescued the orphaned Amelia from outback New South Wales, but the tiny lamb is now under siege from life-threatening infections. Doesn't sound like Amelia. Oh, <laughs> hello, you, Amelia, you've grown. <laughs> Hi, Chris, hello. how are you? Come in. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, Amelia. We are in. I'll give this over the course of about five or ten minutes. Just to minimise any risk of this really protein rich, antibody rich fluid overwhelming a system and, and really sending her into a bit of a shock state. Well, I think it's a pretty amazing idea. If it works, fantastic. Anything that's going to help her. She's not quite three weeks old yet, so there's still a way to go before I'm confident that she's going to be all right on her own. Amelia, we're done. So how are we going to know if it works? It's almost a case of no news is good news. I mean, if she doesn't get any infections, then you know it's working. Come on, darling, here we go. In Bondi, Dimitri is arriving at the practice with Border Collie Bernie for an appointment with Dr Kate Adams. I'm Bernie's dog nanny. Normally I take Bernie out in a wolf pack five days a week with other dogs and we have a great time socialising and, and having exercise. But Bernie has been in the wars. Well, his mum rang me this morning a bit panicked, saying that he had a sore or a wound on his neck. She had to go to work, so she asked if I could bring him in, and I have. So we'll see what the vet says. Hello. Hey, hey Bernie dog. I'm Dimitri. I'm Bernie's nanny. Have you got your nanny with you today, huh? I haven't ever heard of anyone with a dog with a nanny. It's the first one for me. Dogs are really social creatures. They need humans. So I get lots and lots of really doted on pets, and I love that. What's wrong with you today? Well, I think he got maybe got bitten by Victor. Oh, no. Bernie's got a best mate in the wolf pack, and they're always constantly pulling at each other. Now, he's got an abscess underneath his neck there it's from all the rough play. Oh, Bernie. Come on, let's go have a look at you. Cool. Come on, young man. Dimitri thinks that maybe there's been some kind of an altercation. Come on, you guys. So it could be there's some kind of a wound there. Do you know much about his history? But I know that he was a, a rescue dog in California, so she got him from a shelter. Let's just give him a bit of a check over first. I know, Bernie dog. Don't worry. Good boy. What's this one here? So now you take him to the park. Yep. You're his full-time nanny. Yep. It would be like having a whole class full of primary school aged children. It's worse. Really. They're faster. <laughs> so we can't really see very well yeah. just because he's such a furry little dog. We're going to actually clip up that area and we're going to give it a good clean so we can get a better look as to actually what we're dealing with here. Nurse Francesca will be assisting Kate. And you can see he's quite, quite anxious, so I'm trying to sort of reduce his anxiety as much as absolutely possible. I know it hurts, Chuka. I know it hurts. It's OK. So, unfortunately, dogs don't know that what I'm trying to do here is actually help him. It's all right, Bubba. I know, darling. It's OK. Know, darling. Poor old Bernie. I know that he might find clipping a little bit distressing, but I do need a clear view of that wound. He just feels like this is really sore. It's OK, look. There we go. Let's relax. Oh, that looks sore. It does, doesn't it? I can't yet tell exactly what's caused this wound, but I can see that it's infected. There's a whole bunch of pus underneath that skin, and it can be really painful. This is obviously, by the hour, really getting worse, and you can see that Bernie's very distressed about this. 
If left untreated, this infection is just going to enter the bloodstream and Bernie is going to become one sick dog. It's not good, is it? Stressing. I'll just take that off. At the Bondi Clinic, Kate and vet nurse Fran are examining a nasty skin infection on board a collie Bernie's neck. I know, sweetheart, I know it hurts. In reception, Bernie's dog nanny Dimitri suspects the wound might be the result of rough play with another dog in his wolf pack. I say the culprit's victim because those two play 90% of the time together. Now I've got a clear view of Bernie's neck. I'm able to see that there's not a bite mark and there's no wounds there. It means that Bernie hasn't been bitten by a victor. What we actually call this is a pyotraumatic dermatitis. That's also known as a hot spot, an area of infected skin that's really hot and really, really distressing for animals. They often happen around the collar. It's oh, very, nice. very painful. In Bondi, I usually see this in swimming dogs, dogs that love the water. It's usually caused from moisture, getting underneath the collar and rubbing. Well done, sweetheart. So I'm just giving it a really good clean and we're going to actually start burning on some antibiotics and we're going to get Bernie to not wear a collar for a little while. No collar and no swimming Bernie. It's a very good thing that they came in this early. If it was left, this infection would just continue to get worse and worse and worse. Would have been a surgical job. This is going to be a little bit sore for Bernie for the next couple of days. But luckily, rescue dog Bernie is not going to need surgery. Almost done. Almost done. You know, he's obviously very anxious, and this is obviously really sore for him. And he's been such a good dog. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, Baba. Sit. Good boy, Eek. Bernie. Bernie needs an antibiotic injection, and then he can be reunited with Nanny Dimitri. Well done. Thanks, Kate. How no is he? I just wondered, is he a swimmer? Yeah. Right. He loves the water. So what often happens with these dogs, and obviously being a beachside practice, we see this a fair bit. Right. It's going for a swim, and then the collar's like rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. It's ended up in a skin infection. But if he keeps going in the water, it's not going to get better. So definitely no water for a week. No water. Got pills to go home with. You've got some cream to put on yep. twice a day. Yep. And the less amount of collar time, the better. He's so well behaved, he doesn't need the, need the collar, so that's good. So good. I know. We're friends again. OK. You ready to go? OK. Here we go. Thank you, Kate. See ya. No, no, thank you so much. There we go. Kate will be checking up on Dimitri and Bernie in a week to make sure they're both following doctor's orders. Good boy, Bernie. Come on. Come on, Victor. Good boy, Bernie. Come on, guys. Come on. In Bondi, busy dog nanny Dimitri has been following Dr Kate's orders, keeping no, Bernie good. away from water so a nasty infection on his neck can heal. Come on, Bernie. Victor. Victor. It's been a week since Bernie saw Kate at Bondi Vet and he had that skin infection and he's been back in the pack but I've been keeping out of the water. It's hard because he loves it so much. Hey, hey Bernie Boo. I will wait to see if Kate gives him the all clear today. Dimitri. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi, Kate. This Hello, is the wolf Bernie. Back. Hello, my love. I think the injury's almost healed. Uh -huh. Let's have a look at it. Bernie, can you sit down, mate? Such a good dog, aren't you? Bernie's such a good dog. Dimitri, this absolutely looks beautiful. Bernie's skin looks amazing. It's healed a lot better than I expected it to heal in such a short amount of time. All that's left now is to let him get back in that water. Come on, everybody. Come on, Victor. Come on, Ben. Come on. Looks like these guys have an absolutely outrageous time. Good to see him back with his bros, really. No more restrictions for you, buddy. Good boy. <laughs> oh. Why don't we have a race? Everybody grab your own guinea pig. Get a piece of spinach each, right? And we'll see who's the fastest spinach eater in the West here, OK? In Richmond, just across the road from Scott's practice, sisters Ruby, Olivia and Jasmine, plus dad Kevin, are enjoying time with their much-loved guinea pigs. I think the spinach is better than the, the corn. winner! <laughs> Ruby was given two-year-old Maple as a birthday present. But recently, there's been a huge lump growing on her guinea pig's body. 
I'm quite scared. I love Mabel so much. She, she's just wonderful. I didn't really think that guinea pigs would be like a nice animal because I thought that they were like rough and hairy, but they're actually really soft and really nice and cute. <laughs> <laughs> the three amigos are ready, eh? Okay, shall we go? So all the girls and dad are heading over to the practice to find out just what Scott will recommend. Ruby's a tough character. She loves Maple and she'll take the good with the bad. Obviously, we'd like to see the good more than the bad, but uh, I think she's prepared for it if it's not good. Hello, girls. Lots and lots of girls all together oh, in yeah. a pink bag. So it's very suitable, isn't it? Maple's yours, isn't she, Ruby? All right. Well, I'll grab beautiful Maple. So yeah. you two follow me. You two okay. grab a seat. All right. Okay. We'll go and have a chat. Radio. I absolutely adore the family. They're so wonderful. And it's always great to see them. Unfortunately, this time around, it's under relatively sad circumstances. All right, well, let's have a look at your beautiful girl. She's got those incredible albino eyes, isn't she? Ruby red eyes for a ruby red mum. But straight away, I can feel that lump. Have you seen that growing? Yeah. And quite quickly, hey? Yeah. Yeah. And if you think of how big that is versus how big your guinea pig is, you know, if you then turn that into me, I'd probably be like a rugby ball size on my body. How are you feeling about all of that? I'm really worried. I think it's the right thing mm. to remove yeah. this because if it gets any bigger, I won't be able to close it back together yeah. again. It's almost like dressmaking, really. When you take a section of material away, you need to be able to close it, otherwise you can't wear the dress. Scott's so worried about the aggressive growth of the lump that he's booking Maple in for surgery later today. This lump has grown quite large in a short space of time. When that happens in animals, that's a red flag, that's a concern. It could be cancer. Here's the birthday boy. Oh, excellent. You got me a birthday present then. Yeah, guinea pig. <laughs> How you feel, mate? Happy birthday. It's Thank Nurse you. Nathan's so special day, the lump but it's also remove. a big occasion for Maple. Yeah. It's a fairly substantial mass. Scott's about to remove a suspicious-looking lump from the little guinea pig. And it's growing quite quickly and in quite a short space of time, and, and that's what worries me massively. But for now, we just need to do one step at a time. So first thing is anaesthetic. So I'll give you a little bit of gas, gorgeous, OK? And we'll get this nasty lump off you, yeah? Good girl, all right. While she's going down, I think we'll put on the obligatory guinea pig booties. What do you reckon? Definitely yeah? a little bit of space booting. It's, uh... So what I'm doing right now is just insulating little maple's feet. Guinea pigs have a really fast metabolic rate, and that means that they lose heat very easily as well. So all we're doing is putting on these little, well, bubble shoes, we'll call them, and it just helps to avoid her losing as much uh, temperature as possible from her feet. Right, there we go. So footwear done. Okay, now for the main event. As soon as Scott shaves the area, the full size of the lump is revealed. OK, well, that unmasked is more horrifying, really, isn't it? I mean, it's huge. Definitely get that off you, sweetheart. I don't like the look of that at all. I told Ruby that this surgery was going to be difficult. This lump really is massive, even bigger than I thought it was going to be once all the hair's been removed, and it's going to prove more of a challenge. So now it's about taking enough of the lump and the surrounding tissue away that it's a curative result so that we've removed everything we need to, but still being able to close it. And that's the, the tricky bit. Very, very tightly adhered to underlying musculature. is absolutely huge, absolutely huge. The massive lump will immediately be sent off for testing. But now the real hard work begins. We've got to close that huge hole in this tiny little guinea pig. And because this lump was so big, I've got a big deficit that I need to fill. Worst case scenario, if I can't close this wound, poor little maple will have to live with an open wound. And that's not great when you're dealing with a guinea pig. Anyone knows a guinea pig, they're quite dirty little creatures, and that can be quite difficult to look after. Okay. I've managed to touch 
the two sides together, which means that once I put the sutures in place, hopefully there won't be too much tension and it'll heal. Okay, and that is that. You wake up, here she comes, here we go. Hello, baby girl. It was a quick wake up, wasn't it? Hey, I'm gonna get back home to mummy. Hmm? Yeah. Girl. Hi, guys. Soon after, Scott delivers Maple Good. back to her family, waiting patiently upstairs. Yeah. So there's the there's oh, where I had to take it away. At least it's out and it's together. Yeah. Fantastic. So it would look a lot worse if we couldn't close it, but we've been able to, oh, so that's fantastic. good. Now you need to make sure you give her lots of love and cuddles tonight. You can all do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Scott. Oh, you're welcome, sweetheart. You're always welcome. Now the family will have to wait for the lab results to find out whether Maple's lump is cancerous or benign. I'm just really hopeful, maybe just being a big softy, that as it's Nathan, my nurse's birthday today, that maybe a little bit of that birthday good luck will be sprinkled across Maple. Happy birthday to you. And the lump will come back as something we shouldn't be concerned about. It's a shame though it's not night time. I think you'd get the real twinkle. Just down the road from Scott's practice in Richmond, everyone's starting to get into the Christmas spirit. It'd be cute if we had a, a ball that you could hang from the tree. <laughs> the three sisters, Olivia, Ruby and Jasmine, their mum Jeanette and the three family guinea pigs. She could be a decoration. She could be she could be the angel on the top of the tree. We could give them stockings for Christmas. We could fill them up with like spinach or something. Despite all the excitement about the upcoming festive season, there's been a shadow hanging over this close-knit clan. Scott removed an enormous lump from Ruby's guinea pig, Maple, and sent it off to be tested. It really is absolutely huge. Hello, Merry Hello, Christmas. Scott. Now he's dropping by to deliver the results. You? Thank you. Such a big lump. You worry with something growing so rapidly as to what it could be and knowing how attached Ruby was to her animal. You don't need anything awful to go wrong. Let me have a little look at your beautiful girl. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Very good news, young lady, in time for Christmas, is that the lump came back as something called a trichoepithelioma. It sounds awful, but in fact, uh, it's a benign tumour. Nothing to worry about. And by removing it completely, it won't come back. Thank you so much, Scott. No worries. I thought I was going to lose her, but... Oh, sweetheart, no. Mm. No way, no chance. Not before Christmas. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hey? When Scott said that it was benign, I was just absolutely so grateful. She can enjoy many more Christmases with you guys in this yeah. phenomenal tree. I can't believe it. That's <laughs> massive. I could climb it. <laughs> oh, actually... Actually, I'm glad you said that. Oh, really? <laughs> because we we couldn't put the angel on top of the Christmas oh, tree. Oh, <laughs> wow. OK. Gosh. All right. I'm going to need a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be a stretch. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. There you go. How's, how's that? No, oh, no now she's too little leg. Oh, and that's she's that's looking that's down. Okay. You're a hard taskmaster, I tell you, Jenny. A little no? bit to the left. Just rotate. How's that? I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Yay! If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.